reaction to the first sight of a bubble blade. I've always thought that when it comes to fish cleaning, it's not about the handle. It's about the blade. Handles are for pocket knife and flippers and, and EDC knives. I'll give you another example about when it comes to knife handles in the fishing world. Okay? It's probably about six months ago. I got an email from Cast King. Well, Cast King, we all know, is Chinese import stuff making fishing affordable for you. Well, I don't have anything Cast King. I've used some of their line, some of their braid, just because, you know, I don't get all particular in braided line. But they sent me a survey and said, we'll give you a $25 Amazon gift certificate if you filled out the survey. And it was from a, some other third party source. And the funny thing was, is as I was doing this survey, it was all about Cast King coming out with their own fillet knives. Well, that was fine and dandy. They never touched on literally the important thing about a knife, other than there were fillet knives. They were talking about flexibility, length, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. But I noticed some unbelievable emphasis on color and the egronomics of the handle. Doesn't that seem to sound kind of familiar? Hence, the Bubba Blade. I'll tell you my first, first impression of this when I first ever saw one hanging on a shelf was, hey, cool handle. That's about as far as it ever went with me. From what I can tell, they go full bore on marketing and box presentation. I mean, doesn't that just look sweet? Oh man, you're going to catch snapper. You're going to catch bass. Man, you probably got yourself a big old giant boat. Ooh, I got to tell you here, you got a lanyard hole. You got a non-slip grip. You got a trigger grip here. You got safety guards. You got titanium nitrite coating. You got a flexible blade. Full tang construction of high carbon stainless steel. So as I opened this up, I was still fascinated with the packaging. Welcome to the ultimate lifestyle. Lifestyle? Owning a fillet knife is now a lifestyle? You want to proudly display, you want to, you can proudly display Bubba on the back of your pickup truck. Hmm. Sheath. Yeah, that looks commercial quality to me. Then we get to the knife. Let's look at this in detail. Hmm, carbon nitrite. Remember what I was telling you about Cast King? See, they don't like the fact that there's a new buzzword of fillet knives out there called the Bubba. They don't like that. So that's the reason in that survey, everything seemed to be about the handle, the handle color, the handle material. All right, let's see what it says here. HC stainless. Ooh. Mm, yeah, 
Yeah, the handle is pretty zippy. They're making sure that they know that you catch so many fish. You catch so many fish that your hand might get tired. First thing I noticed the minute I did take this out of the box prior. There's no edge on this side, really, to speak. I mean, no real edge to speak of. There's a slight edge on this side. They're giving you a Bubba blade <clears throat> with basically a single edge on it. All right. Now that I even have more light on the subject, here's our 7-inch tapered flex Bubba. Yep, it flexes. And here is a brand new in the package Dexter Russell with sheath. Now I could only get an 8 inch. This is a 7 inch. Really, what's the difference with 1 inch? 99% of the time when you're cleaning fish, you're using about a half to three quarters of the blade anyhow. Pull the Dexter out. Oh, wait a minute. No sticker? Oh man, I got ripped. No cool pamphlet telling me how cool I'm gonna be. Oh man. Well, since I talked about what was on the packaging of this Bubba. Okay, let's talk about this one. This was donated by a viewer of my YouTube channel. His name is Orlock. So, the Dexter Russell. This was $47, maybe some change. We'll just round that off. Okay. This at my local bait shop was $38.99. Let's just say we'll round off $10 cheaper. So let's look package to package here. Dexter Russell, since 1818. Bubba Blade, American Outdoors, Columbia, Miss, uh, Missouri. Made in China, Dexter Russell. Made in the USA. And I know a little bit of trivia with Dexter Russell is that they've been made in the same place since 1818. Southbridge, Mass. What else do we got here? Stain-free, high-carbon steel. Edges are individually ground and honed to an ultimate edge. Edges, as in plural. Hmm. Then you turn it over. I don't know if, I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know exactly, but this seems like an edge on the, I'm right-handed, so this would be the port side, and it seems like there's an edge on the starboard side, but not much of an edge on the port side. It just seems that way. What is the Dexter Edge? It's a professional cutlery designed and built and tested by people uh, in, in kitchens. You know, I mean, Dexter Russell is, they make everything from spatulas to kitchen knives. It's got a guarantee. I've used their guarantee before. Uh, I have used it on one that I did get that was a cleaver and my cleaver was messed up somehow. I do not know what happened to it. I contacted Dexter and they put another one in the mail to me. They just said, send me some photographs. And I showed them some photographs of, I had some machine marks and an edge that was sort of wrong and they replaced it so i ended up taking the one cleaver that was messed up and grinding it and doing a lot of stuff myself and i just gave it to my dad yesterday 
easy to sharpen, stain free, high carbon stainless steel. put it in there. Okay, I don't I don't know if it goes if it's I guess it's going. No, it doesn't go all the way down. Kind of a cordura sheath. Not really something that I want to be sporting. Let's put it that way. Right? Now, let's take the Dexter sheath since we got it here. Came with the sheath. Drain holes at the bottom. Hard plastic. Snaps in. Pretension. It ain't going nowhere. Simple webbing. Let's look at the difference here in the handles. Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, Dexter's do come in different models. This one here is what they refer to as, and here is a Santi safe, meaning it's a total sanitary knife for major kitchen use where stuff can't get in, food and bacteria can't get in it. That has been designed over time. Okay, I'm sure they're not just doing a tang to hear a tang is the part that goes in the handle. I'm sure it's a full tang up in here. If not, at least a rat tail tang, which is a tapered piece like that that goes back all one. All right, they say this is full tang. Would this be past the sanitary conditions type? thing probably not with these grooves uh, I don't know if food and you know bacteria can get in there so these this wouldn't be something that would probably be uh, you know commercial kitchen worthy it's not made to be this is now their proprietary steel is referred to as I believe Dex Steel made in USA. Okay, you can see the grind on there. Absolutely wicked sharp. Now about those edges. It might be because of the fact that it has this DLT DLC coating on it or whatever. Um that it's making the edge look kind of strange to me but that is the initial look-see you go to any fish house fish processors commercial kitchens all over the world probably all over the united states if not and you will you'll see this these now that handle versus this handle you still have where your finger is going to stop your finger is going to stop this to me is bells and whistles. All right. This is how I store my knives on my boat. And let me tell you, it really works. Just because something's made out of stainless steel, and that's what they're trying to do here, folks, is they're putting this coating on. They're putting that coating on the blade because this steel is probably pretty cheap steel we already know it's super thin and then they're trying to make it where in salt water that it's just not going to rust up on the first use okay so i keep them in this welding tube and this is the ones that stay on my boat day in day out i got see dexter makes one with a black coating this is a uh, serrated blade that I use for serious wackage and stackage of nasty fish, like sheep's head and big giant drum. 
So we're going to move this one to the side. One thing I can notice right off the get-go, what Dexter's doing, is they're embossing the name in the side of the newer knives. And the older knives had this where it was rubbing off. That was like printed on there. And it's you can see it's it's wearing off. There's my Dexters, all nastified. All right. So, this is probably the thinnest one and the oldest. Man, a bunch of noise out there. This is the thinnest and probably the oldest. You can see it's been ground and ground and ground and ground. So let's do an initial sharpness test of the Dexter and the Bubba. Well, I didn't have to go far to get a nice piece of paper. Because there we go. Not as thin as newsprint, but probably a, about like, you know, printing paper for your, for your copy machine. Glossy. Oop, I hit that. But we'll see. have to say right there I can tell the Dexter is way sharper than that wow that is sharp Start on new edge. It's sharp, but it's not going as easy as this one right here, as that Duxter. Just, uh, I gotta really work it. I gotta work. I gotta work it. It's, it's it's not as sharp. Well, now I can't do diddly squat. Bubba isn't as sharp. It's doing okay on its beginning here. Now, what can we do next? This is part one of a dual part video. So be sure to subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. Because that's the only thing that YouTube recognizes. Granted, this was a ton of talk. It was a show and tell. This is part one, though. There will be a part two. You can bet on it. Because I'm sort of 
I'm sort of a little bit known for my absolute, uh, what would you say, brutal tests on these knives, on all my knives. I have one where I'm testing this cold steel tiger claw, and I put this through some unbelievable paces. I have another one where I do a... A Vispa knife from Ontario Knives, I believe, where I beat the living daylights out of that thing. So there will be a part two, but this is the initial check it out type video. So to put it really plain and simple, would you pay $10 less for something like this? Or would you pay $10 more than this for something like this? That the thing doesn't even seem to want to fit. Really, it's your choice. Made in America. Made in China.